I'm Steve Wiggins, and this is the Groundworks Ministries podcast. Today we're reading from the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 7, so let's focus on verses 9 and 10. Now I am rejoicing, not because you were grieved, but because your grief led to repentance. For you were grieved as God willed, so that you didn't experience any loss from us. For godly grief produces repentance, not to be regretted and leading to salvation, but worldly grief produces death. Once again, 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 9 and 10. Now, growing up, I remember a poster that was hanging on my friend's bedroom wall, and it was an enlarged portrait of the Peanuts comic strip character Charlie Brown. And he had a defeated look on his face, and the caption just read, Good Grief. Now, when people think of grief, we generally relate it to sadness and to loss, and not good feelings. But in today's passage, Paul is saying that there is a kind of grief that is actually good and even godly. From time to time, I am asked to minister at funerals, and so I've seen grief. I've seen a lot of it. But we don't have to experience the death of a loved one in order to experience grief. Grief comes whenever we suffer loss, and sometimes the worst loss is the kind that we bring about ourselves. When I share the gospel, I usually begin with one foundational truth. God is perfect, and His standard is that we be perfect. And I'll follow that truth with another sobering fact. Nobody is perfect. It doesn't take long to do the math on this equation. So mankind is in big trouble unless some overwhelming external force intervenes. And I've seen people react to this information in several ways. I've seen them display denial. That's not true. Or they get angry. Or they start bargaining. Or they get depressed. Or they accept it as the truth. By the way, those symptoms are known by psychologists as the five stages of grief. And what does grief have to do with the gospel anyway? Well, people who have believed as truth, the lies of the world, the flesh, and the devil, well, they have incurred great loss. And even though they may not be conscious of that loss, there is a presiding anxiety in the world because of it. And the gospel exposes that loss. Essentially, The unredeemed person has to realize that his or her life has been built on a faulty foundation. And thus, everything that their life is built upon, when it's built upon that foundation, well then, that foundation has to be demolished and everything that's built on it has to come down. The proper foundation, the Messiah or Jesus, it has to be laid. And then a new believer's life must be rebuilt upon that firm foundation. When grief has run its course, it leads to acceptance, moving beyond your grief toward a hopeful future. Are you yet to follow Jesus? Well, then what's holding you back? Abundant, even eternal life awaits your decision. And it reminds me of a song verse that I wrote several years ago. It says this, Though your sin would cost your soul, your debt was paid in full. His grace comes without toll to make the broken whole. You know, God loves you, and He wants you to receive forgiveness and to enter into a saving relationship with Him through a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Good grief. Do it today. I'm Steve Wiggins, and this is the Groundworks Ministries podcast. Check us out at groundworksministries.com.